Hey guys, my name is Cypher Den, and my parents were super overprotective. Hoi, that's too deep. You're gonna drown. What? What? Hi, Nako. You don't even know how to swim. The water is too deep. Dad, the water's up to my waist. <laughs> So yeah, a little overprotective. I wasn't really allowed to go anywhere. It was literally school and then home. Once I got home, I wasn't really allowed to go back out. Not to go to the deli, not to go to the store, not to go get food, not to go to the park, not to go hang out with my friends, none of that. I wasn't allowed to go out over the weekends and I wasn't allowed to go out over the summer unless it was with my family. But then you can always be a bad child and not listen to your parents if I was you. Okay, but you're not. So... Growing up, my dad used to have the worst anger problems. My dad's childhood was a complete horror story. There were times that his dad would get so mad at him that his dad would actually lock their whole family outside so that no one could help him during his punishments. I won't go into details, but he hated his dad so much for that to the point that he tried to run away at the age of 11, and he didn't want the same thing for us. He wanted to break that cycle, and he did. But on the other hand, all our toys, broken. Super cool Power Ranger base, broken to pieces. My closet door, broken with a big giant hole in it. Let's just say that every time my dad would get mad, he turns into a and destroys absolutely everything. We were safe, but everything we held dear had a high chance of not working anymore. And my mama, on the other hand, if I pissed her off, well, she kind of just stops talking to me for a couple weeks. This one time, she kind of just gave me the silent treatment for three whole weeks. I don't know, man. I don't even remember what I was in trouble for. So, how was your day? Yeah, yeah, that day, oh, that my day went well. How about yours? So you want to talk about this problem so we can possibly solve it? We could always just sit here for the next couple of days not talking about it because I still want to eat tomorrow. Okay, I love you! You can see my dilemma here, right? Speaking up wasn't really an option for me. I was terrified of speaking up because, well, either I got yelled at and got my stuff destroyed or I got ignored for almost a month. Bless the Lord Shrek Almighty that we're on better terms now that I moved out. But yeah, my not yet developed teenage brain was in mental warfare all the time. And as you can imagine, I got bored a lot. I tried to rebel a lot. And by rebel, I mean changing how I looked drastically even though my parents were completely against it because it was one of the few things I was able to control in my life. I dyed my hair all the time. I pierced my own ears every time I got in an argument with my parents. Kids, please don't do that at home. I was a rebellious teenager that didn't know any better. If you want to get your ears pierced, do it with a professional and not in your bathroom with a random needle. Cause that sh hurts. And boys, ooh, boys were out of the question. My dad had this whole no boyfriend until you're 50 rule, which meant no talking to boys or talking about boys. When I went to a school with almost 80% boys. But you know, I was a rebel, but not that much of a rebel, but a rebel. Like not enough for me to get in trouble, but just enough to piss them off just by a little bit. And my laptop technically can't be broken for things that my dad doesn't know, right? That's what happens when you have super strict parents. You start sneaking off and doing things that you're not supposed to. Instead of saying, hey, I'm gonna go to the park close by our house, I go, hey, I have after school, therefore I will be home a little bit late. Meanwhile, I'm getting bubble tea and then hanging at a super ghetto park where there was a lot of gangs and shootings and I hung out there all the time because I didn't know what that meant. Like, how was I supposed to know what local gang members looked like when I was stuck at home all the time? And my only friend was the homeless guy that kept peeing on my window. What? Yeah? I don't know. And by the end of high school, Georgie, my high school crush, ended up asking me out. But here's the thing. It was technically summer break at this point, and I still wasn't allowed to go out unless I was with my parents, so there was a tiny little big kind of gigantic problem here. So I had to ask my mom if I could finally go out over the summer. The previous year, I asked my mom if I could go out once over the summer because one of my friends were leaving the country and I was never going to see them ever again. And guess what? My mom said no. And then she got mad at me and then ignored me for like a week. 
And then my friend got mad at me because supposedly I was being a terrible friend because I couldn't say bye. <coughs> Just... <coughs> 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 But somehow, I managed to finesse my way into talking to my mom to the idea that I was a very responsible grown adult going into college. Dad still didn't know how to cook because my dad yells at me every time I turned on the stove. Just because I microwaved freaking Play-Doh one time because I thought it was going to get soft. Because food gets soft when you microwave it, right? How was I supposed to know that it was just going to burn? So yeah, I never learned how to cook, but I know not to put Play-Doh in the microwave. But I've done pretty much everything they've asked for. Got accepted to an amazing college where I get slapped paint on canvas. Graduating with an amazing 3.6 average, as long as we don't talk about chemistry and physics because I fell asleep in that class. And by the sweet blessings of sweet baby Shrek almighty, I was somehow allowed to see Georgie once a week. My mom didn't necessarily care if I had a boyfriend, as long as I didn't tell my dad about it, so you know, I don't die. Granted, I had to be home at 5pm, and at 5pm on the dot, I had to text my mom that I was home or else I wouldn't be able to go out the following week. I don't know if you guys understand what hanging out until 5pm means, but by 4pm, I would be running for my dear life as if a demogorgon was after me, just trying to get home. And if those trains were even a little late, ooh. We're late, we're late, we're gonna be late. Uh, this is it, boys, I'm gonna die. Uh, uh, my dad's gonna kill me. Uh, it's gonna be okay, you can just text them. Uh, do you know who my parents are? Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Oh, look, we're here. So three months into our lovely relationship was my 18th and my sister's 13th birthday. Okay, we have the same birthday, we're both named Denise, but no, we're not twins. A couple of days before our birthday, we were going to have a tiny little picnic at Central Park, and I wanted my dad and my family to finally get to know and meet George. Because if he met Georgie, maybe, just maybe, I can see him a little bit more often. Maybe he can drop by over the weekend. My family should know who I'm seeing, right? Georgie was so nervous, but he met everyone just fine. Everything was going well until that train ride to Central Park. My dad was giving George the death stare for a good hour. Hated his guts completely, just complete and utter anger towards this poor guy that he didn't even know. He was straight up shooting daggers through his eyeballs like pew 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 pew. pew. My dad isn't really the stereotypical dad looking kind of dad. He's more so muscles, tattoos, piercings, leather jackets, boots and sunglasses indoors kind of dad. Growing up, quality time with my dad was sparring until I cried and fought back and teaching me how to punch walls until my knuckles were broken in. According to my dad, I wouldn't have to break my hand if I ever had to punch someone because they were already broken in. You know, tough love kind of thing. In all honesty, I had no idea if my dad was just gonna pull out a katana out of his pocket or some kunais or a ninja star. You'd think this is a joke, but he has a couple of them just chilling at home. Eventually, my mom talked to my dad and probably avoided death and destruction, and my dad just went straight home. He was so mad that he just went home. Didn't stay for a birthday, didn't say bye, just went straight home out of anger. Which wasn't my goal at all. I just figured, what did my parents want to meet the guy that I was spending all my time with, and eventually possibly marry? But I guess that wasn't the case. But I still think it was a success because heck, because both Georgie and my laptop was still in one piece. Anyways, the picnic went well and we had some bomb ass ribs and really good cupcakes, but ever since that day, it became a household rule that we will not talk about boyfriends in front of my dad at all or ever. He didn't want to hear it, didn't want to have anything to do with them because spoilers, my sisters have boyfriends too, and if he doesn't know anything about them, technically they don't exist. Believe it or not, my dad didn't meet Georgie again until four whole years into our relationship. Nowadays, my dad's like best friends with Georgie, like he's the son he's never had. Georgie ended up teaching me a lot of things like bagels, Philly cheesesteaks, halal food, delis, dog parks, the sun. Yeah, I told you I lived under a rock, so what? Wanna fight about it? I'll fight you about it. Wow. I don't wanna fight anyways. And I know my parents were tough and strict and sheltered me from the outside world and it's because they care and love me. But this baby bird wanted to see the outside world and eventually I had to leave the nest. And when I jumped out of that nest, 
I'ma be real, I didn't know how to flap my wings. I went straight down and face planted on the ground. I think I was in the nest for too long and I was a stupid bird that didn't know how to fly. So I had to waddle wherever my destination led me. I legit burned my rice the whole first week of moving out and I couldn't call my parents to ask how to cook rice because bum bum bum, you guessed it, they got mad at me and they stopped talking to me for like a month. But thankfully we're cool now and I now know how to make rice. Hope you guys liked that video. I know it's been a while, but I went to RTX and then VidCon and then I lost my voice. It's been, it's been quite an adventure, but we're back. More animations coming soon and web comics as well. I promise. I promise. They're coming out soon. Don't quote me on that. All right, cool. I'll see you later. I'm gonna go take a nap. Bye.